It's gonna make me. Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. a very special guest tonight. Please welcome back for the second time. Music artist, composer, producer, and psychotherapist, Clara Part Two. <laughs> <laughs> you need a breath? You need a moment? <laughs> Catch your breath? I almost had a panic attack. Because I, I, I thought I was going to read off the wrong title. After playing such zen music yeah. too? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's good seeing you. It's been three years. Same. It's That's why it feels longer. Has it? And shorter at the same time. Really? It feels. We had long. we had a few varieties of pandemic in between. Yeah. So. What do you remember? <laughs> like three years ago, who was? Do you remember who was here? Was it George? Was it? You're, there was a dog. Oh, Kirby was. Kirby here. Kirby was here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ilani was here. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love Kirby and I love. Yeah. Uh, we, we parted ways as well. Kirby? Yeah, we, me and I, it, it, oh. we, part, we parted ways. Okay. Yeah, it's been, I think, a year. When did that, okay. And then same with you, we all, yeah. Yeah? With you? Yeah, with you. you. You, your relationship, you parted ways. I'm with an you. open book. You don't need to walk on eggshells. You, you parted ways with your man. My husband. Your husband. Your husband. My ex-husband. So, well, so was that, was that nerve-wracking? Like, just that whole yeah. process? Oh, yeah. No, was it built? <laughs> now, did it? Hold up, hold up. Now, did it build? Were there, did it build up to the point where you're like, okay, it's time? Mm. I have so much. It's so complicated. It's so complex. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been oh. in that relationship how long? Four and a half to five years. Okay, that's a good chunk of time. That's how I met you. Now yes. I think. Of, so shout out to Fishbowl. Shout out to <laughs> um, and Miss Robot. Yeah, this, this I don't know that is that the new one. We have like a it's a film studio with a giant robot. All right, so Fishbowl. And We're still all super friendly. Are you are you working there? So friendly. Yeah. It's a media company. Yeah, it's a editing it's post production. A, yeah, it's a production house. It's, it's everything. Mm -hmm. It's a film studio. That's how I met you, right? It's through yeah through that and through Alani. I think Alani worked for my ex husband. And then that's right. That's God, how, that's... And then she was like, you should come in for this thing. Right, right. And so going back to that, it was like a build up to the point where it was a mutual thing where. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like how, how there's like, it's like a pool. It's like, you want to go like ankle deep or you want to go like mm. knees, you want to go like belly back. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to go? Now, were there warning signs? How wet do you want to get? Right, right. <laughs> Were there um, talks before that where you're like, were there ultimatums like, hey, dude, if you don't shape up, yeah. blah, 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 then you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it was like if we're making a potion for what I call a love completed, not failed. Okay. You think that divorce breakups are like failures. Mm -hmm. you, you could. No, I'm taking notes. Okay. okay. Um, so I think it's a love completed, not failed. But mm -hmm. yeah, there were lots of things. We, so much we learned. We went to a ton of therapy, and it helped so much. Couples therapy? Yes, couples therapy, individual therapy as well. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, like everything. What was the flat final straw where you're like, uh, uh, we, you know, I gave, I gave you a shot, several shots. The final Boom. straw was, um, man, I just looked at my behaviors. Not my you look at your behaviors, not, my not his, not his behaviors. Yeah, the thing is that you have you ever heard that thing where if you point at someone else, you have three pointed back at yourself. Oh, I like that. I like that saying. Is that a saying? I think I, someone I learned that when I was like six and like. <laughs> we're gonna get to the we're gonna get to your Korean upbringing soon, but continue, continue. But it just it hit me in a real way that every time something triggers me, I'm like, wait, you know, or like really. Wait. Right. Um, so anytime I'm triggered now, they say triggers are a blessing because they show you where you're not free. Oh my goodness. So I've just been like 
rooting every trigger up and like it it will never stop right but so when, when you went through that process was it a, was there a time where you're like you had clarity where like okay we need to do this decision because this is the healthiest choice yeah it's funny because one of my um so i'm a psychotherapist and oh we're, we're gonna get to that yeah it's crazy mm -hmm. um but one of my colleagues was saying that sometimes couples therapy just helps people get to an amicable place Mm -hmm. So for for me and my ex-husband, it was like, we just understood where the other is coming from, why what happened happened. We have this, we call it a narrative view. Like equals is that right. a real term? Yes, it's, a, it's okay. a real term. It's called narrative view. Narrative therapy. Narrative, narr yeah. narrative therapy. Yeah. So it's therapy where you have a story or narrative behind it? Not behind, just of. Of it. Because it's okay. like, when shit goes down... You're tumbling in a fishbowl down a hill, right? You're yeah. just, oh wait, what, pun intended? Ooh, <laughs> first pun of the show. Yeah. Um, so you're just like in the chaos and you're getting whipped around, you're in the dark, you don't know what you're fighting. Mm -hmm. Narrative just helps you understand what the fuck happened. Yeah. So you know what you're dealing with. That's so weird you said that because during the time of when I thought, when it was coming to an end, I realized afterwards, mm -hmm. oh, I had a lot of... I'm a hard person to deal with. Aww. Well, you know, because I'll give you an example. Yeah. My sleeping <laughs> schedule. Oh. You know, what like. What is your sleeping schedule? Um, vampire. Okay, so yeah. down at down at daytime, you're allergic to sunlight. I haven't. I probably haven't seen the sun in a few days. <laughs> I thought vitamin D. So vitamin D is not a thing for you. I the thing is the. Because I, like, watch stuff at night as well. Like, I get all my stuff done. Yeah. I get all my stuff You're done. You're a functional human being. I function, yeah. but it's just my sleeping It doesn't isn't, like, good, like, for relationships. Because... Unless I meet another vampire. Oh. You know what I mean? But Ilani was like, you know, she, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, so, I, don't, I don't know her sleep schedule, but, but she she wanted to go down at, like, nighttime. Well, well like, a nerd, yeah, like how normal. How most people. Yeah, yeah, most people. Not normal, people, but most people. people. Some yeah. people do that. So, yeah, I had to look at that part of mine. Is it because, why do you prefer to be up at night? You know what? We just talked about this before you came in. I think that for, uh, you know, because uh, as far as music writing as well, yeah. or anything you're doing creatively, yeah. it comes at night for me, at least. I'm like, because it's quiet. Yes. It's that one time of the day where there's no distractions. People aren't texting you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So it's that. Um, we like to play uh, Warzone. We, we play video games. <laughs> yeah. like we play oh, Warzone. I know Warzone, yeah. Yeah, so we play Warzone literally like never during the daytime. It's always after 10 p.m. It kind of doesn't feel right shooting people in broad daylight. For me. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. like a nighttime thing. <laughs> FPS is like a nighttime thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so it's those things too. It's like that and just like, I guess my habits. That yeah. It was, it, it, uh, you know what happened? It builds up. What feels, just all of my stuff like they tolerate it yeah. but then it's like a balloon getting filled up until yeah. it just goes uh, and it pops yeah. and then that's what happened i know you gotta like that's why you gotta work it out immediately because then it just sits and festers yeah and then like starts coming out and leaking mm -hmm. in other ways now did you as far as you and your your ex-husband like you dealt with stuff like that as well it was it's so complicated it's like one part Religion, one part cultural differences between our families and us. Wait, it's so, yeah. so the Korean element. Oh, it's it, yeah, it's, like it's a, huge like influence your on your oma and appa. Did they? My oma and appa. My they mom approved. Dad, they approved. They approved of him, and that's a whole nother story. Because then, like, race is a a, a a factor in this whole thing. He's half white, half Korean. Or oh, he was half Korean. He's half, he looks full white. Even he I does. was like, he does. Even I was like, I need some family photos. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, to prove that he had the like, Korean blood. I was like, I see your adult family photo. I need to see the children right. family photo. Yeah. <laughs> like, he looks white passing. There's a tinge of something. Like, you're like, what are you? But that, so race is a, an ingredient in that whole mix. Also was just our youth. Like, we were 24, 5, 6, something like that. So oh, young. Oh, my goodness. Um, and then I had an identity thing going that I didn't know about. Like, I didn't know who I was. Like, what do you mean culturally? Or, like, what do you mean identity? All of it, man. Like, I was a Christian then. And we talked about last time. How yeah. Like, 
while I support whatever faith anyone chooses, I am not. I yeah, I'm not religious. Anyway. I oh, used yeah, to be I'm Christian. I used to do that too. We talked about him too. We did the whole like tongue oh, speaking yeah, in tongues bit. Really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I'm not religious. I don't. I'm spiritual. I'm That's not religious. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm always open and I'm always questioning. And the thing is, you can't prove these things that you're. It's it's faith. Mm. You can't. Can you prove faith? I don't know. I don't know. You have to have patience. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, now let's go. The Korean aspect's interesting to me because, like, yeah. I get some Korean guests, but I love I love it when a Korean comes on because we can talk about Korean shit. Yeah. You know, and like not have to explain. Yeah. 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 So were your parents strict? Oh yeah. Like growing up, you you grew up in Cali, right? I grew. I was born in New York, LA, mm-hmm. back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, I was the first, I'm the oldest, and was so sheltered and grew up so concerned. My parents are amazing humans. Amazing humans. Can we give them a shout out? Amapa. Amapa. Oh, Amapa. Amapa. Yo. Dude, your Korean is, is great. It's okay. It's good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not <laughs> Hanguk Ma. Na 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 Hanguk Ma mo teo. <laughs> Did you say Chongshin Pyo? <laughs> yeah, Chongshin Pyo. I've never heard that. I've always heard Chongshin Chalyo. Chongshin Chongshin Chalyo means like get your shit together, like wake up. I always thought this, okay, Chongshin Pyo, because my dad, oh, rest in peace, pop, yeah, my dad's right there. When did he pass? 2019. Yeah, his ashes are right there. In the wooden, in that the wooden, wooden box? box, yeah. Appa! Yeah. Oh, well, you wanted, that was a crazy day. Oh, wait. Yes, I want to hear all about it. Well, okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to that. Let's get back. Okay, so Chongqing Pyo means wake the fuck up. Yeah, but get your shit. Like wake the fuck up. Chongqing is like attention. Yeah, you get Pyo your... is to like decrease. Like it's to like oh. fold, unfold. So I don't know why they worded it that way, it but makes they, sense yeah, to me. yeah. Don't you feel, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does shikya mean? Like, iron your shit. Iron your attention. But what is, yeah, shikya? Shikya is like bitch, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, have you time that? Time that part? Your dad's, <laughs> your dad's saying it right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, he used to scream that in the house. Were your parents abusive? Like, without knowing it, yes. No, I'm talking about, like... Like, what? What's K- that? Like, K-Rage. Like, like, I'm talking about K-Rage. Like, well, Korean Rage. So, like, you know, you go to... At recess... Oh, you go to... Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. That was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, at recess, I remember we used to just, like, compare. It's so fucked up in hindsight. But you'd be like, oh, yeah, I got hit with the with the shoehorn, the big one. And then someone else would be like, oh, I got hit with the belt. And then someone else would be like, golf club. And you're like, oh! Oh, so you compare <laughs> with your friends in school? Yeah. yeah. You have no idea. You're just sitting there comparing comparing child abuse stories but they don't understand there's a huge cultural gap like koreans deal with shit differently so the cops showed up at my mom's uh, at our house because she had my parents my parents are amazing i I swear no no no. you you already we already put that on the universe they're good but but they're we're they're we're humans yeah well it's also just culturally different right yeah um different time different times so give us context as far as like when the cops showed up like so i go to school with this gash on my head and then they were like what happened here and i'm in second grade and i was like oh my mom threw a box in my face (laughs) she she threw a box at your face yeah i remember ducking down behind one of those rocking chairs the, the little like you know yeah yeah from toys r us and then it was like an empty box, but it hit like I don't I don't. The remember. angle hit you at it. Michelle Obama says all mer- memories are subjective and imperfect. So I was like eight. This might be wrong, but all I know is I told them I had a gash, and my mom threw a box at me, and that's true. And then next thing I knew, I was in the nurse's office. Cops were around me, making me take my clothes off, uh, and like. What grade were you? Second ish. Second. Second grade. Yeah. Oh my god. And then god. I just came home, and then my mom was like crying, and she was like, "Do you want them to take you away?" Like, I have no idea oh, so she put it on you. She played the victim. I don't know. I mean, it, she just, it was a learning lesson for her, too. Like, oh, I can't you do this can't here. You can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> your parents from Seoul? Or yeah, I'm from like, Seoul. They are? Yeah. They immigrated here, like, 20s, 30s. That's so crazy. Oh, um, no. My parents yeah. were experts at keeping secrets. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning stuff now. Yeah. Like, like I didn't know how abusive my dad was. Mm. He uh, When I was a kid, yeah. I think kindergarten, like, he knocked my mom's tooth out. Oh shit! Like that's and I didn't learn about the awful. way I learned. I, I re- kind of remembered the feeling, like my mom barricading with the dresser, like the the, oh. the the door, and 
But then my brother, when he explains the story, he's like, dude, you don't remember? Like, Is when mom, there? yeah, my brother's all, when mom opened up her mouth, it was bloody. You don't remember that dad knocked oh her tooth out? God. I don't know. Maybe I blocked that out. Of course. So That's did, a traumatic ass thing to witness. Yeah. So did were your were your parents that abusive like that? No, not like that. No, not like that. But they're abusive in their own ways. Man, there's such a good quote. Um, I, I share it with everybody. It's a Mitch Album quote, but he's basically saying that all parents leave marks on their kids, like glass, like fingerprints on glass. Mm -hmm. And some, like, I'm butchering, I'm butchering. Some like leave prints, some leave smears, and some shatter it beyond repair. Who's yeah. this guy you're quoting? Mitch Album. He's a famous author. Like a Mitch bestseller. Album? Yeah, he wrote like Five People You Need in Heaven. Album, A-L-B-U-M? A-L-B-O-M, actually. A-L-B-B-O-M. Mitch Album. Yeah. And I don't think you can compare like traumas, but mm -hmm. that's that's really, really hard to deal with. Yeah, and I think that, um, <clears throat> because you mentioned my dad's passing, um, yeah. the, the day he passed. Tell me about uh, it. My brother, well, it was first of all, the morning it happened, my mom let out a scream um, at the bottom. We're in, we're in Gilbert, Arizona. Yeah. Uh, the nursing home was like maybe a five to seven minute drive. It was close. Mm -hmm. So the morning, uh, you know, I think we were just up at, we were in separate rooms. Me and my brother were in the guest rooms upstairs, whatever. And my mom let out uh, like a sound, like, you know, like, like fear. Yeah, like she said in Korean, uh, maybe you can help me interpret. She said, oh, how do you say this? Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh no, Appa is gonna, is about to die. It's happening. How do you say that in Korean? Uh, that dad's about to die? Yeah. Appa chukukkoya? Yeah. And then... But screaming it. Like, oh, you know, screaming like that. dad's gonna die. Yeah. It's, no, 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 how do you say it? It's time, it's time, it's time. It's happening. It's time. It's time. She said that in Korean. I mean, I, I need context, but like, to to me out, to go, yeah, 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 something like that. Uh -huh. Where I'm like, I heard that. I'm like, come down, like, right yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we have to go. We have to drive. We have to go, Dad. It's time. It's time. In yeah, yeah, in Korean. So once I heard that, I was just like, because mm -hmm. this is the thing with death. Like, you, no one. Pro prepares you at all growing like there's no classes no there's nothing where they prep you for something like that don't get me started so i was just like i was kind of in shock but i i just i didn't even like i just splashed water in my face and we just went i didn't know uh we i've talked about this but my you know me and my brother are sober he had 17 years sobriety i have now like 14 15 years hell yes um but i didn't know that he had brought uh weed edible gummy bears or something your brother yeah uh -huh. and so, you ate them accidentally no he not accidentally oh. he you know because oh, uh, people deal with death differently you know maybe it was over too overbearing oh yeah but i, I so i didn't know he had consumed something mm -hmm. at the house by the time we got to the nursing place uh there was a nurse in the room and it was like literally i we we got well thank god we arrived just in time while it was happening so I actually witnessed like um, his uh, his spirit like leave. leaving his body, his yeah. soul leaving his body. Yeah. How did you? What did it look like? It was more of a feeling than a visual thing. Ooh. It was more of a feeling, you know. I do. Um. So I just went like you know me and my mom were standing on the side of the bed, but then we actually felt like the his <laughs> physical. You know, once it happens, it, they progressively get colder yes they do because i was holding his hand and, and then i you know i kissed him yeah um, so um and then we're i thought we're doing the appropriate response we're crying hysterically yeah. but then when i looked over at my brother, brother yeah. it was like he was experiencing more of it like a uh, third person like maybe viewing Out of it. body. Yeah, yeah, more like viewing a movie or something you know yeah. like there was not a lot of but then at the time, it is like I thought, oh, he's just dealing with it his own way. Yeah. But um, have you heard of deathbed visions? No. So I didn't know what this was either. But that like two days before, the night before, I went back to the nursing home because it was twenty four seven visiting hours. Yeah. So I said that afternoon, hey, you know what? I'm gonna co go visit uh, Appa later I'm gonna shower and then bring my iPad so I can watch a movie or a book or something. Yeah. So I, when I went back, they had taken the feeding tube out of his 
belly button. So he was catatonic. He was unresponsive. Oh. So the whole week he was just like this. But then I was watching Rocky 2. Yeah. And I look over and he was like this. His eyes were what, like he was like. After passing? No, 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 no. This is the week before. before. Like, yeah, 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 maybe a day before, two days before. Okay. He was seeing something in the ceiling. Jesus. And uh, and I, I researched later. It's yeah. a common thing when a person's about to pass. There's this thing called deathbed visions where they see, they, they it's kind of like they're tripping on acid yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. Where they see a past relative or something. Because you know, he's seen the guy with the fedora, you know, like yeah. there's in Korean culture, uh -huh. usually there's a man in a suit with a hat that visits you. This I did not know. Yeah, it's a, it's a known thing. I mean, not just in Korean culture, but just all around the spectrum. Uh -huh. Yeah, so he had seen that the his like years before on he, when he had like his gnarly stroke. Yeah. He had seen that man Jeez. with that with the hat. But I think in the ceiling, he saw him, again. He saw him or. A group, maybe a group of family members. Dang! And so you witnessed him kind of having that that trip. Yeah. The, the vision, the deathbed yeah, vision. Yeah, the deathbed vision. A lot of nurses. Um, th there's publications where they've written about this because you know nurses are. See that all the time. All the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you been a nursing? Have I been? Yeah, have you been to a nursing I, home? I, I was with my grandpa the same way you were with your dad when he died. So, same. so can I hear about your that that day? Your well, experience? I mean, I was just a button yours up. I want to know how you dealt with how you coped with losing your dad because I do know that it, it just gets pulled out from under you and you're not expecting it, and it hits yeah. you like a ton of bricks, and then you can't even like you have all these the sorrow because you can't even yeah. talk about past shit because they're gone and like. I don't know. Yeah, you know what? It hit me the hardest because, you know, uh, my imobu and uh, yeah. Gomo. Uncle and your uncle. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then, uh, you know, uh, they, they, a few of them, they drove from Cal. They, they came and, you know. It's weird because <clears throat> they were more like, um, they handled the well, More stoic? Yeah, they're more stoic. That's a great word. They were more, more stoic. Yeah. It was more, I don't know if this is a Korean thing, but they, they kind of kept, just yeah. to be strong, they, you know, they're stoic. Mm -hmm. But I just remember, dude, like, we went to In-N-Out Burger right after. <laughs> that was so like that a was, double double. That was weird. It's like, it. like, where do you want to eat? And they're like, oh, let's just go to In-N-Out. I think you've been there. You've been to the one, Andrew. The, the one in Gilbert, you know, near the Walmart there in Gilbert by Santa <laughs> Village. We went to that one because, you know, we have the Arizona. We have that connection, connection too. Yeah. But, um, okay, so going back to so afterwards, when they had left... I just remember it really hit me because we we're just leaving the room, and I, that's when it really hit me. Like, oh, yeah. like he's really, he's uh, like this is the ended. this is really the last time I'm gonna see him. And uh, I was, I think I just yelled in the hallway like I was fucking just, I, I, dude, it was it was gnarly. Mm. Um, Would you say you and your dad? Could you sum up your dad in three words? Just try, for shits. In, is it, are we doing a little bit of psycho uh, Oh, this is just oh, like, okay. this, like, no, you, no. Are we doing a therapy? <laughs> like, what's going on right now? Are we doing like a mini this therapy? This is why I don't like telling people I'm a therapist. Because um, they get all like, wait, to, to, put on their magneto helmet. And, like, <laughs> that, that, that kind of like represents who my, um, hard working. Hard working. Very, very hard Yeah. Working. He's an uh, immigrant, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hard working. Um... Loyal, mm. right? Trustworthy, yeah. Those are three. There's thing. more. There's a lot more. Yeah. But uh. And were you on like good terms with him, or like was it a mixed bag? You know, it's weird you said that because I, because you know, there's still that uh, underneath the surface, there's more. There's there was resentment because of the past trauma and abuse. <laughs> oh, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But then once, I think towards the end of his life, yeah. I. Forgave him yeah. for all of that because I'm like, because now I think I think I'd understand more if I had kids, but I don't know what it's like trying to raise kids or to try to hustle and and to you know what I mean? Yep. And the mm -hmm. amount of just pressure yeah. on him, even as an immigrant, he didn't know the language very well. That's why when my friends are like bitching about their parents and so resentful, which I was there too. I I, I worked through it, but I'm like. Listen, they did the best they could without Google, without money, without mm. therapy, with, you know, therapy is stigmatized for 
a lot of Asians. Yeah, so what do you mean by that? Like, it's if you went to therapy, they're like, oh, what did you do? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, but some people do therapy just, just to do it. I mean, it's getting destigmatized now. Everyone's like, I got a therapist, my therapist said what? It's like very casual now, right? But at least in my culture growing up, it was like, oh, yeah, you're, you're like sickly. Yeah, you need therapy. Like, I just have the Lord, like, we're good. Right, <laughs> right. Now, like, even, even after that, even like his passing, I, I, that. This is no justification of why I do the things I do, but then when people kind of shame me on my sleeping schedule, Aww. you know, they're like, dude, why, you know, I'm like, well, I've, my dad, I'll give you a prime example. Yeah. My dad was the type of person that got up at 5 a.m. every single day. Yeah. So when I saw that, I'm like, well, that didn't prevent all the strokes that he had. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I'm not, this is no justification. I'm just giving you an yeah, example. Yeah, like my of, sleep schedule. Yeah, yeah. It's like, in, in a way, even Charles Bukowski, like, he had sayings of, like, how he doesn't understand how normal people are, like, pro. it's like more of a conditioning. Like, get up, do this, go to the job, yeah. clock out. And it's like, yeah. he did, he's just like, why is everyone programmed that way when, like, he? you know what Bukowski did? He used to just, Sleep for three days straight and get up, drink a beer, go back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and you lived a pretty damn long exactly. life. So, I mean, I didn't mean to switch topics, but... You did it. But I'm just saying that I, that's maybe unconsciously why I'm like, well, I'll just do what I do. I get all my shit done. Exactly. I think that I'm such an individualist. Like, you tap into what works for you, sir and ma'am and whoever. Mm -hmm. Like, that is it. Can we go back on, like, this is interesting because I the therapy thing fascinates me. When did you decide to do that and pursue um, that outside it, of music as well? I mean, I don't I don't know if there was, like, a, like, pull a lever, or like, moment. But, oh, um, I've just always been interested in psychology and the human, right? And they're actually all the same thing. All the things I do are the same. So, like, music, acting, like... Uh, what else do I do? I do so many things right now. Um, I can read you a um, <laughs> composer. And, 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 yeah, and therapy. Yeah, recording um, artists, recording. Yeah, mm -hmm. all of that. It's the study of the human. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what it is? Yeah. So, I don't know. I, during COVID, I was like, oh, this is the perfect time for me to do study this thing. And so I just... So you went back to school? Yeah. You went back to school? I went back to school for my master's during COVID. What? It was so Dude, fun. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. So where did you go attend these classes? Oh, it's all online because it's all Zoom. It's all Zoom. Yeah. And then where did you go look? Like, how'd you know what curriculum or where oh, to go to? I just what did my school? research. What I, school? I looked at ranks. I looked at what classes they offer. So I go to Pepperdine. Um, that's a great school. That's a great school. Pepperdine oh, University? Oh, that's good. Oh, that's the whole good. campus is blown there. <laughs> Actually, I'm sorry, we're we're yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. I always thought it was just mostly. I mean, like, that's America, right? Uh, right, mostly, right, 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 right. Is it mostly No, I'm white? saying because geographic wise, it's it? by the water, isn't it? Like, oh, by yeah. Malibu? Or oh, something? yeah. I mean, it's like privileged central, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, Pepperdine, but, great school. But the, the school curriculum teaches us, like, multicultural competence, mm -hmm. is what we call it, where, like, we learn all about curbing what the dominant culture so they like teach us how to be really woke and like not woke for the sake of signaling that i'm woke right like, right genuinely woke how hard were the classes like how much were you studying you know moment? when you're when you love something is it hard or, no it's just fun mm -hmm. was it so, easier opposed to when you're younger going to school it was yeah that's the thing people are like oh i'm old and i can't like do this thing anymore and i'm like i don't know if you're interested i i ate all of the curriculum up so you loved it. I was like Hermione Granger. It was like it was so you, annoying. You, <laughs> love, you love this you love the process yeah. of doing that. I loved it. I mean it had its moments where I'd be like, uh, I'm like a little strapped right now. This is a lot of work and I have to read how many pages? Like you know, there's moments like yeah. that. Yeah. Were your parents proud? I'm sure they were they yeah. were they were celebrating inside. They're like, oh you know, yeah. Hakyo, Hakyo, you know, how you say you go back to Yeah, your um, mom was proud. My mom was just like happy. Yeah, she was just not so much. I we've broken down that whole like Asian be be on this degree level. Or oh, the Korean Have this many letters behind your name. Yeah, we've broken it's down those barriers. It's bullshit though. I hated that. It it's is bullshit. Yeah. But continue. I love. I love what you're doing right now. As far then, how many years did it take you? And then I. I mean, like oh, like two. But I. I did a fast. I did a fast track. Uh -huh. I, I like. I took yeah. 
I, I did a lot at once so I could end faster. Then how does that work after you get your degree? Do you it's work like for someone school. or do you yeah. do you work privately? How does that work? It's like med school. You put in your hours, you get experience, um, and then you have to take a licensing exam. And, and then, then how, and how then strenuous is that? Is that difficult? That part I'm up against, so we'll see. Yeah. Oh, you're still in the process of Yeah, that? yeah. So I'm like <laughs> a therapist, but I have to get my life. I have to pass my test now. You do? And yeah. then how hard is that? Is that like the SAT? Like I worried. Is it? <laughs> is it just like? Uh, it's it's hard. Do you have to write essays? Like, how does that work? Oh yeah, I don't I don't know. I haven't looked at the structure, but they definitely give you what's called a vignette. Like, they give you a case, and they're like diagnosis person, or they're like, what would you do for your treatment here, or like, you know. Now, what particular is it? Criminal psychology? Is it? No. What kind of oh, psychology oh, oh. is it? I am technically a marriage family therapist, an MFT, but. Amer MFTs treat mostly just individuals. Wow. Yeah. Why did you cho choose that particular I mean, field? first of all. <laughs> you, have experience, you have experience. Just life like experience. relationships. Yeah, yeah. Relationships have been so interesting to me my whole life. And what fascinates you about it? The dynamic? Good question. Is it the power dynamic? I want to I wanna figure it out. Yeah. I want to figure There's it out. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. And you know what? I've even... Um, I'm just so open, right? So I've even done, like, uh, my ex and I dove into, like, polyamorousness at one point. Like you, That was an option? Yeah. Describe to the viewers and listeners what that is. Polyamorousness is just, like, having, I mean, I, I don't have the Webster, but it's just, like, having an open relationship so you could be with multiple people while staying committed, and it's whatever you set it up to be. It's how, like, you, so that was an option for you and your ex? Yeah, I think we did that for, I forget how long. You guys actually did that? Yeah. You did that. Yeah. You were dating stuff people on the side. He was dating people on the side. Yeah. Can you still live together? Uh, well, I was abroad a lot, like working. Yeah. But then I would come back, and then yeah. So what was it? So you dated other dudes? Yeah. You did. I did. <laughs> You're that, that, whole, that whole <laughs> idea is that a newer idea? Because it's not really. You know that it just you know, depends on your circle, man. It, it, if you're with like very traditional conservative people, no, that this is unheard of. But if right. you're with open minded people, yeah. everyone's right. Was he doing it. that as well? Yeah, I mean we both just kind of realized through the polyamorous experience that we're monogamous. <laughs> right, 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 right. We were like, ah, oh, we just kind of both buddied up with one person and we're like I don't think this is it for me. Yeah. yeah. And then did you enjoy? Did, who enjoyed it more? Did he like it? Did you like it more? I think we both did, and then both didn't. Okay, so like, I, I, today I'm monogamous. You're monogamous yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay, so tell me what else y'all um, did. Oh, I forgot what your question was. Um. Oh, what, Andrew, I did. I forgot. It's like things you've tried in a relationship. To yeah, things you've tried in your relationship, like to, as far as, to make it work, or uh, yeah. I mean, no. like tons of therapy. Couple That's therapy. Couple, couple therapy. And individual. Because yeah. if it's really dysfunctional, you need to go assess and examine your own shit and then come back. Does that did make you, sense? Yeah. How did you find the therapist? Did you both... Referral. So yeah. you both mutually agreed? On getting therapy? Yeah. yeah. On, on, no, the particular therapist. No, I mean, he just kind of trusted me that, to find somebody. So you found it? I mean, I, yeah, I found... Was it a male or female? Your referral. We've tried a, a, a ton on, like, we've... We've all kinds. And females. All kinds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it was so helpful. I can't recommend it enough. It was the big, and that's also why I got into it, right? Because it it changed my life. I was suffering so much. From what? Therapy. Everything. My upper arm. Was it was, was there a codependency involved as well or no? I think so. There was. So to a degree. Yeah. I don't, there's a spectrum of it, right? Because if there's one party that's abusing a substance or a drinking yeah. or. Yeah. Whatever, you yeah. know, right? Yeah. Also, I'm just being respectful because I still care and love that my ex is a person. Me so too. Like, Me too. Not I didn't, we didn't say anything wrong, did we, Andrew? Did we say anything wrong? Nothing wrong. <laughs> There's nothing but love here, right, Absolutely. Andrew? Absolutely. I just don't want to air out like someone else. No. I haven't like... No, no, you didn't. You, you haven't. You, in fact, you've done the opposite. You've been very respectful. Well, because I do respect him. Yeah, yeah. I do too. It's I just, respect him. It just wasn't the right... We haven't even said his name. Yeah. That's how, you know, yeah. I said the name. We didn't even say... Dude's name. Yeah. It's funny because people are like, they hear that we got divorced and they're like, they make that like face as if I said someone died or like, you know what I mean? What was that process like, like? Is that a hard process? I mean, it's. I it's, mean, because you go through the courts and the state and everything, right? It like, gets stressful at times, well, yeah. but like, it's the most amicable, positive 
thing, supportive thing ever. How long is that process? How much paperwork is that? Like, how, how hard is that? Uh, it depends how many assets you have and like how... Oh, y'all had a house together? Uh, well, like businesses and stuff, so... Ooh, so it gets a bit... Ooh, it gets, compli <laughs> it gets complicated. Thing. Yeah, but here's the thing is like, let's say you and I are getting a divorce. Then it's just whatever you and I agree on. Yeah, you seem. I'm yeah, really yeah, saying, I'm yeah really I feel a little, little anxious. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tension. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's whatever you and I agree on. If you and I can just like come to an agreement, and you have just, to have that draft it up. You just have to write it out. Yeah. Both parties sign. Yeah. Because it's a partnership, right? Yeah. It's a partnership. Yeah. So it's like, how bad is it in the relationship, and that's how messy it'll get. Wow. But we're not messy, so it's like. So, and then not only that, his personality, I mean, from what, I, from a, what I've known of him, he seemed like a mellow, just chill dude. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that, that was no problem, that aspect of it. No, he's just the sweetest human. Yeah. yeah. This is, so I think I remember. Whoever ends up with him is going to be like, so lucky. See, you're giving him love. I, I it's genuine. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, so you're saying, uh, my initial question was, what fascinated you about like um, psychology and what got you into that line of work? Partly my own shit. I wonder if like anyone who studies psychology just went through a lot of shit. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure even people who dealt with trauma and abuse as well, they're like, I want to understand yeah. this. Right? And then partly all, the need. I feel like there's such a need. I feel like we're all suffering. Not all. We're, a lot of us are suffering. Yeah. Actually, suffering, I believe, is inevitable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just inevitable. You have to. You yeah. have to fail and you have to suffer. Yeah. It's just You need happen. failure. You do. Yeah. You do need to fail. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? I think so. A person who doesn't fail, how do you learn? Like, you have to fail. Yeah. Even if you're set, you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth, mm -hmm. you are going to suffer. Like, right. I know so many trust fund babies that are miserable, right? You do? I do. So they don't have to work? No, never. So they have money yeah, in Yeah, they bank. just blow like 30K worth of cocaine a month. Like You know people like, like that. I do. And they're, they're, they're not happy. No! <laughs> Who the fuck is happy blowing? I, you know what? I always wondered that because I've never had that. Like, yeah. I've always had to work some shitty job yeah. to pay for, you yeah. know, rent somewhere. Yeah. yeah. We were neglecting your music. Oh. I yeah. want to, because like time, we have about 15 minutes okay, left. Okay. And I want to make sure we're putting some light on that. Sure. The last time we talked, you were doing this operatic performance. So Was like, I? Yeah, we talked oh, about it. You're like... Um, Walt Disney Concert Hall yeah. with, with the orchestra. So from that moment, tell me about the trajectory of your music. Weren't you recording somewhere at Joshua Tree doing something? It was. Go ahead. Um, I, I mean, I have learned how to produce. So like... So you produce. I make my own everything. Yeah, so... What do you, what, what do you record on? Uh... It depends. Ableton or Pro Tools. I knew you were going to say Ableton. Yeah. <laughs> I love Ableton. I knew it. Uh, sometimes Logic. Honestly, like, I, I just, just do whatever I need to do, but... Do you teach yourself? No. I'm, yes and no. Like, just meeting dope people who believe in you and want to mm -hmm. teach you. So that's how I first learned um, Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. And then Ableton, I went to a school called Beat Lab. Fucking dope school. Okay, so can we give Beat Lab a little love? Yes. I think so they might have Beat closed Lab? during COVID. So is that a school? Yeah, Beat Lab. Um, the guy who runs it, his name is Yuda, Y E U D A. Also goes by Side Brain. I don't yeah, know what yeah, this yeah, guy yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing, amazing. So is that's a downtown LA somewhere? Eagle Rock. Eagle Rock. Yeah. And what is the curriculum? Is it like pro like beats? Because yeah. it's a Beat Lab, so is it production, hip hop, yeah. or yeah, all of it. All of it. Whatever you want. Do they have different types of machines, even like the old school MPCs? Yeah, and... they have all the MPCs. They have like a whole live room, and well, they shut down during. Oh, COVID. okay, okay. So, but I, I so you went there. Get it up. Yeah, I went before COVID. Wow. Yeah. So I learned you've how done to a do lot this. since the last. Yeah. Therapy. <laughs> school. Composing. Yeah. I composed during COVID, which was so fun. Mm -hmm. Um. There's a huge makeup company named Bobby Brown. And yeah, I read that on your Wikipedia. Is that on my Wikipedia? Yeah. I don't touch it, so. Yeah, and then it also th said. Uh, They're watching me. Did you, um, I, David Choi? Yeah, you, what about him? Didn't you do stuff with him as well? Yeah, we've toured the world together, David. So shout out to our David. main man, David Choi. That's He's been so, on here too so as well. That's so funny because I just reconnected with him and he, I'm like, he's like, I have a nine month old. And I'm like, shit, what the hell? He's a man? father? Yeah. Named Bijou, like a jewel. Really? Yeah. Love that dude. Love so you toured the world with David Choi? Yeah, many times. Wow. I've done like 
so many places, so many countries. What are you working on now? What projects do you have in the works? Oh my god, I just, I think I'm working too much. Because I'm also producing a TV show. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait. It sounds ridiculous saying it out loud. No, 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 I <laughs> love it. So what, 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 what is the show called? And uh, the show people... is called Rule Breakers. It's about Asian Americans who are badass and going against what mom dad told us to do. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, so we have like all kinds and it's not your average talk show where it's like, oh, be prim and proper. We go there like you do. Yeah. Yeah. So what now, what is it going to, how do it's people watch it? It's a company called Joy Sauce. I think it'll be on available on YouTube or their site. We're, Rule we're, Breakers. We just shot episode two, so it's still like forming. Yeah, and then you, are you a writer on that or? All of it, yeah. You do. It's like a collaborative thing. So you thought of the idea. That's no, no, no. The, the idea was thought of by the host. His name is Howen Wong, H-O-W-I-N. Okay. Wong. Um, it's going to be awesome. Okay, so definitely look out for uh, Rule, Breakers, Rule Breakers, okay, on Joy Sauce. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about the music projects? Well, you were in Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree yeah, 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 I was. So what's that? Are you recording a new album? Just, oh, yeah. Um, it's just that I, between, like, the divorce and then school and then, like, working as a therapist and then, like, taping auditions and then, like, <laughs> what That's else am I doing? What else? A lot. <laughs> I'm doing a lot. And then moving and like all this stuff is just, my album keeps taking a back seat. So as of this week, I'm going to be more intentional about it. I read in a, or I read, I heard in a podcast, you should be thinking like two hours at a time, three times a week into a project or it won't get done. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to like take that seriously. Is there a concept behind the album? My life? I think I felt like I didn't have a message. For the longest time but now that i've done the self-work and gone through the journey i'm like oh i got my message i've tapped into my culture i've tapped into my identity mm -hmm. i've tapped into my past and my devils and like my demons i mean right and i'm ready are you gonna how are you gonna release it like independently you're gonna go through a label how's that gonna i don't know it's like i'm my whole career has been people coming to, to me approaching me and i'm right. like wait maybe i should be approaching and i've never gone the label route i've mm -hmm. been independent like did a lot oh, of Oh, the things. whole time you... The whole time. So you release it, like, you have, like, your own iTunes or yeah. Bandcamp? I mean, I had a manager help me out for a lot of it, but I've toured the world many, 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 many times. Independently? Independently. How did, who booked that? How did you manage to do that? Just take, it takes a village. Wow. <laughs> now, um, so, like, this pro... Do you have a title of the album? Not yet. So that'll come. Yeah. Yeah. How many tracks do, do you I'm want? I'm shooting for 10, and I'm shooting for... I like for that. I like that. Like... I like that. Anything more, yeah. that's my opinion. Anything yeah. more than 10 is like, dude, yeah. we, we, you know, because the attention span. Yeah. Like, I grew up, we are listening to tapes. Yeah. Well, we had to earn the listen. Rewind. <laughs> or, and then CDs came and play, then you press the, yes. the skip button, yeah. you know, to do the tracking. Yeah. But, like, I... Would you say people digest music differently? Like, I seem like they listen to, like... It's the TikTok. Okay, five seconds of this, oh, five man. seconds of that. I get it. Five, you know, I don't like that. Man, you're. I was thinking about this on the way here, just like the TikTok numbing of our I like generation. It. I don't know, man. I, I don't know, because I do know that numbing is not the way to grow anything. Mm -hmm. um, could be part of the process, but yeah, I don't know. I just know so many people. I think we went to a club for someone's birthday party, and literally, it was the most overstimulated club I'd ever been in my life. How? In what ways? Uh, it's just like the music and the lights and the like, the, you know, like everything was, everything was popping out. Everything possible. And everyone was on their, like literally we all just kind of did this and everyone was on their phones. And they're at a nightclub? In the night <laughs> then why are you at the nightclub? Why don't, you can do that can at you, home. Can you be motherfucking present? Like, please. That's not my cup of tea. You couldn't pay me. We're on Warzone and we'll, we'll be chilling or he'll be watching skateboarding at home. I'll yeah. be doing, yeah, but I can't go out like Do you that. know your love language? What the hell is that? Baby? You don't know about this? <laughs> I didn't mean to like... Uh, no. Is that, is that a book? Or what is yeah, that? it's a book. Um, they say that... I think you need all five, but... Okay, can we go over that real quick? What yeah, that okay, uh, in what? a relationship. Okay, do go from one to five chronologically, please. Uh, it's not kind of it's not chronological, <laughs> but it's like you have a major love language, so it can be quality time. Quality time. Um, gifts. Gifts. Acts of service. Service. Touch. Touch. Or oh. words of affirmation. And you're asking me, me, what I do? I mean, like you kind of there's a quiz, and then and then it spits out what you are, but. Um, I think more. Um, like, what do you need 
in a relationship above the other. Touch! Touch! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hello! I need touch! Yeah. Touch me, touch me, touch me. Touch. <laughs> touch. Okay. And number two. Thank you, that's the show. Number two is touch again. <laughs> touch me more. Touch, touch, number touch. Number three, hold up. I do like words of affirmation, but that's not like a priority. It's nice. I like gifts. Quality time, though. I like quality time. Yeah. I think you need all five, but it's just about knowing, like, the main artery, you know? And what are you? I'm equal to equal parts quality time and touch. See, dude? You gotta have the touch. Yeah. Some people don't need it. So there's the relationships where they, they're, like, not, like, they're sleeping on the same bed, but then one person's way over to the edge. The other person is over here, or they're sleeping in separate rooms, oh, like my folks did. Are you, are you talking about? Oh, oh, I thought you were uh, describing my marriage. No. <laughs> Hello. And that's another time scale. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that you experienced that. Oh yeah. No, like ill intent. It's just. Is that a Korean thing? Because my no. folks did that too. It's just the mark of being estranged, man. It's just the mark of like being distant. In our defense. I do like the initial pre-sleep where you're cuddling, yeah. but your arm gets numb yeah. or something. You know what I'm saying? You know, some people have, like, have cuddled, they don't get numb. I don't know what's up with that. They don't get numb. They don't get numb. But do you need... Okay, let me ask you this. When you're sleeping, do you want someone touching you or do you need separation? I don't know. I sleep like a like a rock, so... So you're deep it's what, you're It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. I'll see you when I wake up. <laughs> yeah, I'm more like, I'll do that pre-sleep, but yeah. then when I'm, like, winding down and yeah. I'm about to sleep, like, just... Yeah. I need... To, Space. I mean, look at my bed. It looks really nice and I mean, tidy. But describe... Is that, a, is that a sleeping bag on top of your bed? Hello! <laughs> <laughs> What, what on only it? one side of the bed, <laughs> a Coleman sleeping bag. Hello. Wait, what's up with that? I know exactly what's up. With wait, that. wait, wait. Are you um uh Mike Birbiglia where he sleepwalks? Wait, what the hell is? Mike Birbiglia has a condition where he sleepwalks, and people have murdered him. No, 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 so no. He no, has to no. sleep with mittens and like a little no. upside My down thing, bat case. It's comfort for me. Oh. I like the sleeping bag material. Oh, the swishy swish. Yeah, <laughs> it's just nice on my back. Like, oh, the, but is it fuzzy on the inside? I don't sleep on the inside. Oh, you sleep on the outside. On the outside. Have you traced that to some experience? Like, did Wait, you wear a you, lot of? Are you psychoanalyzing me? I'm so curious. Why do I sleep on top of it? There's zero. I think it's fantastic. It's like very refreshing feeling, right? That uh, swishy air breaker. Uh, airbreaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Breaker. I like that. I like the windbreaker material. Yeah. But when I get on the inside, I feel like trapped, yeah, like it's, I'm in a cocoon, yeah. like, oh no. And if I do that, I have to have one leg on the outside of it. You're like, I'm, I'm out. It's my getaway. I'm partially yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to answer your question, yeah, it's, 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 I like the material on top. Uh, I like a separate blanket, the blue one. The fleecy blue one. Yeah, the fleecy blue on one. On top of On you. top of the sleeping bag. Okay. Um, and... I don't use the other side of the bed. I'm literally just on that side of the bed. Do you ever think about getting a bed half the size? What do you mean, like a twin? Like, That's a like full. A, like That's a full. Are you saying to downgrade to a twin? I mean, just you don't use the other half of the bed. Well, maybe one day I'll have company. <laughs> oh, that one is the best. My ass was like, not gone one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for romance too. You know, I'm older, but I, I don't want to be alone. You know what I mean? Uh, no. like, hey, once in a blue moon. Yeah. You know, I, I yeah. would like. Get that touch, touch, I would like. Touch. Yeah, I would like some company. <laughs> I would like some company. So what happens when well, a company is over? Well, they won't see the sleeping bag. Oh, you you hide the sleeping bag. I make bag. it seem like it doesn't doesn't exist. <laughs> what would happen? What would happen if you owned that shit up front? You were like, hey. So when. Because what if she's like, if I it, also like sleeping on Windbreaker. Then that's a different right? story. And then you're like, my soulmate. No? Then that would, yeah, I would have to buy a wedding ring. I'm just so. <laughs> there you go. Hello. Fast track to the wedding ring, right? It, are you saying if if I do hypothetically have female company? Yeah. Why? And in an alternate reality. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just a um, fan. Um. Then what? Ask me again if if they were cool with that. Yeah, I, mean, I said, um, what would happen if you led with like owned the sleeping bag instead of hiding it when company comes over? I'm just like I like what you're doing. Falling. I think that's more truthful 
Yeah. They, that would be more real to who I am yeah. rather than if me hiding it and putting it in the bag and yeah. just, you know. Yeah. That's like Literally not really clothing. me. Yeah. So you're saying own up to it. They walk in here and they're like, oh, you have a common? <laughs> it's, why is it only on one side of the bed? <laughs> is that a common too? I think, I, think too? I don't know. You know what? Maybe I could do that. I'm just a Because I'll be more trust. It'll be more like. Honest. Honest, not trust. Authentic. It'll be more authentic. Sorry, authentic. I'm just a big fan of if you know who you are, just like put that shit out there because then you're attracting what you want instead of like presenting this molded thing you know what? only to be like, psych, that's not me. Sorry, I wasted a year of your life. You know what it reminds me of? Like, I remember a prom or a homecoming where, you know, I was so like aware of how messy the car was that like. Instead of just, you know, the car was fine, but I was doing Windex. I was Windexing everything and wiping everything uh, down and back. And it's like, it smelled weird in there. <laughs> it's like, I should have just owned up to the fact, like, this is what, this is how it is. Yeah. And, well, you know I'm, not, I mean? like, I'm not saying don't take care of things. Like, take care of things. Like, brush your teeth. Mm. Like, you know. Oh, that's a whole, we unless, can talk. Unless that's a kink and, like, I mean, like. <laughs> we get, that's a two-hour podcast in itself. Brushing teeth? Oh, just my teeth fall out. Okay. I don't. We, the leaves don't go to the dentist. I have so many. We, we don't go to the dentist. All right. Well, what is that? I just see bubbles Dude. where a tooth should be. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Time stamp that, Andrew. Hello. Oh my God! No one has ever said a bubble to where the tooth should be, and Andrew. Please note that on your phone. We're I'm we're getting, editing that I'm out. Getting hot. There is that so there amazing. is a whole row missing. A row? But keep going, Korean. You know all the Koreans that do this shit. What? That don't go to the dentist. Uh, yeah. I mean, like we would not ever go to the doctor because it's expensive. I don't like the way the the the, the lobby smells. Smells. And I don't and... like the waiting room. I don't like the music. I don't uh, like the ma- how the magazines are yeah. presented. The plant in the corner. Yeah. I don't like the spark up water down yeah. there. I don't like walking up to the desk and talking to the. Le- I don't like any of it. Yeah. It's too clinical. Sterile. Yes. Yeah. I don't like that. No, I don't either. Until, if I'm on my last four or five teeth, uh-huh. then I'll go. I bet you you can find it. <laughs> Time <laughs> stamp that too, Andrew. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Wait, which four has it got to be? Like front front ones or back ones? It's the front one. It's the front There is a presentation. Yeah, it's just the front It's for the thumbnail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's for the thumbnail. Just these. Just, just, just one, two, three, four, five. Just these. I think you got like seven in your smile though, bro. Like, smile for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. You have ten teeth showing in your smile. Really? Yeah. Well, so there's a lot there. missing down here. Oh. There's, yeah, there's... Doesn't yeah, that make, does that make chewing and food, like, unpleasant? Oh, my brother lost all of his chewing teeth. Damn. He chews with his gums. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> we just not make this look very good as far as having the best, you know, dental like, practices. I'm just a fan of you doing what works for you. Does it work for you? No, but uh, <laughs> no, it's, it doesn't look like it's working for me. I mean, I look, mean, look where I live. <laughs> look at my lifestyle. I have a goddamn Coleman sleeping bag. <laughs> uh, only one side of the bed. But you're sleeping. I have, uh, I mean, that bed frame from Ikea from like 20 years ago. It looks what? nice and clean. Yeah, and there's like a flower You're being nice. You're being nice. I'm being honest. Yeah. So are you saying, no, let me ask you this. Is that unattractive to feel like if they knew that? Yeah, if they knew what? But like that, that I don't go to the dentist. This is going to sound like a cop-out answer, but it depends on the freaking female. Really? Yeah. But what if there's thong breath? Well, I personally don't like poop breath. <laughs> if you're asking me... <laughs> no, I can't get your question. <laughs> okay, can I, wait, uh, we're getting to the end. Can I throw you a hypothetical? Yes, always. You meet a guy, right? Okay. And what's your ideal man? Like, Do you think Leonardo DiCaprio's handsome? It's so funny. All those people that uh, everyone idolizes and like fawns over, mm-hmm. I don't care. Who do you I, think is handsome? I, Keanu Reeves. Here's the thing. I don't care about handsome. I care about connection. We'll just keep it on the handsome for now. Play the game, guys. Yeah, just, just, just work with me. Work with me. Work with me. Uh, Tom Hardy. This is what I mean. Like, like he's a fox. Tom Hardy. Oh, not my type. Jesus. Two breath. Edit that out. I don't 
Tom Hardy's I mean, a like, box. Everybody in Hollywood's beautiful. Everybody oh, it doesn't else. have to be an like, actor, okay? But uh, who do you deem as attractive? Again, I'm attracted to their insides. Like John Mayer. Come on, man. Okay, John Mayer. But it's because of his insides. All right, but we'll stick with John Mayer. Yeah. We'll stick with John Mayer. Yeah, but I'm like... Okay, you're on a date with John Mayer. Okay. And then you have a great time, and then you're like sitting close to him and then you notice that you're watching a netflix thing and he said he's eating popcorn but then he says something this far away yeah. and it's just shit um, <laughs> oh what would that do to you do wait we first date first date oh but then it's thong, oh, thong okay. breath but everything else is connected but everything right? else is good he smells good okay his hair is nice you, wait like, how does he smell good what is his situation no no no, no. his his body smells uh, good like like his, his breath is shit smell. he has shit breath oh i'd be like would that change it? I'd be like, Johnny boy, you want to stick a gum? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let, okay, let's play that out. new organic Okay, so he has gum. Spearmint gum. organic gum. <laughs> he's chewing it. Yeah, he's chewing it. But then... Oh, God. It's mixed with spearmint with shit smell. Oh, it's like halitosis. Yes. Will that change it? You're attractive. That would, that would turn me off. I'm such a... I have a hound nose. Same. I have a hound nose. You can Same. smell like dong. Yeah, like anybody I'm dating, they'll come home and I'll be like, you had pepper steak, yes, grapefruit LaCroix. Like, I can smell it what all. What did you smell that. when you first entered here? Oh, I didn't pay attention. Because there's I lit Palo Santo. Uh, oh, I did smell Palo Santo. Thank you. I, I logged that. Okay. You did? Oh, sorry. You did? I logged it because I love Palo Santo. Okay, okay. I did smell that. Okay, well, we're going to edit the last, I think, 15 minutes off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Can yeah. I not? What do you mean? No, that was the best part. Platform. I can do whatever I want. I don't want that. Uh, what was okay. the best part? All well, of the this. The whole bullcrap. Yeah, all that is. I, mean, I didn't make it out. Yeah, we can't do it. Too good. No, but it's already out there. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't like bad smells. So, what else is a major. So, poo breath, but what else is a major turnoff? Major turnoff <laughs> is somebody who doesn't want to grow. Mm. What do you mean by that? Somebody who thinks they're always right. Somebody who thinks that they're perfect. Somebody who thinks that it's their way or the highway or like just not willing to grow. Compromise? Is that, is there a difference there? It's like, like look at, look at what I just described about myself. I'm into always bettering myself. Mm -hmm. And like taking out my ego and just being like, oh, that needs work. Or like, oh. Yeah, because you're working on your side of the street. Always. You're cleaning your side of the street. Always. Yeah. And, and not only cleaning, but like planting things and like watering wow. it and like Nurturing. fertilizing it. You yeah. Yeah. You're a plant woman? I'm a, oh yeah. I'm like, I was going to be poison ivy. I, I should be poison ivy. I always have themed, my birthday's Halloween. Mm. So I always have group costume parties. Oh my gosh. I'll send you an Insta that's like that's fire. Cute. That's amazing. It. Yeah, I should do like a Batman theme. I want to be poison ivy. Yeah. So, so your future mate or the guy you're dating has to be up to par as far as work that they've done on themselves. Work that the, but it'll, it'll it's eternal, right? The self work is eternal. It's always a work in progress. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, like, what's the point of living? So, but as long as they're making effort. Yes. That's all you're asking. Yeah, like, grow, read books, go to therapy, like, examine yourself, be aware, be mindful. That's not asking the whole world. I mean, it's not. And I think it's what every human fair. should do. Anyway, every every human. Imagine the world if everyone had better mental health. What if you met a guy, Hulk? He looks like John Mayer. <laughs> no, no, just hear me out. It looks like John Mayer. He's got a million, hundred, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh -huh. But he just sits at home and, and plays video games. Not like interested. It. But he's got hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't care. He can fly you anywhere around the world. I don't care. I've lived that. He long. has a. He's got plants everywhere in the house, don't in the care. bathroom, the best plants you want. You keep like reaching at this outside periphery stuff. So it's not the outside. I'm trying to tell you, it's the it's the guts, it's the insides, it's the brain. It's, it's a, a soul. It's an inside job, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And I think that may conclude it. Can we do now? That was fun, don't you think? I'll I always think have fun know. here, man. Um, can we, at this point, can we start plugging your stuff? Like, sure. how they get your album, your website, your Instagram, Ooh, whatever. Oh, Lord. Okay. Um, so, Instagram is Clara the Artist. Spotify is just Clara. Um, we got a TV show coming out called Rule Breakers on Joy Sauce. And what else am I doing? Did you say your Instagram? Hi, uh, my Instagram is Clara, Clara the Artist. Artist. Can you spell that out for the viewers? Oh, C L A R A, the T H E Artist. Mm -hmm. Website? No. 
Um, wh what about your album? Where's it good? Like, how they get your music? How do they download Spotify, it? Spotify or all the platforms, whatever you use. Apple Music. Clara. Title, yeah, Clara. So caps. go on Spotify today and type in C L A R A. Yeah, and she, she she's gonna pop up. I will. Is your name? Is your picture on there? It's in all caps. My picture's on. I have like. Oh, all caps. caps. Yeah. So Clara in all caps. But they might need to type in the word like go for Bo B E A U. And then Clara, Bo, and then it'll land on it. Where does this bow come from? It's a song. Or oh, that's a song. That's a song, a song title. About my polyamorous gotcha, love. gotcha. Okay, so what? So definitely de stream that. Yeah. Can they buy albums, like physical copies of a record or they a CD? They can. It's on Big Cartel, but meh. Just... Why don't? Well, come on, let's plug that. Let's... Oh, thanks. Big yeah, Cartel. Cool. I, I forgot, man. <laughs> oh, like... uh, okay. Well, uh, Just they... type in Clara Big Claire, Cartel. Yeah, It'll Clara Big Cartel. Yeah. Buy the physical copy if you want it. Yeah, but check it out on Spotify or on Apple Music or Tidal or whatever. Mm -hmm. like Amazon Music. I don't even can't keep up, man. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> so, do you think we covered? I mean, I feel. I, I feel. Twitter, fine. Facebook, none of that. Mm, just, you're good. You're good with I'm just an Instagrammer. Things. There you go. Yeah. Follow her on Instagram today, Clara the Artist. Okay. Thanks again for uh, tuning in to another episode. Uh, YouTube.com slash Scissor Bros. Okay, I keep forgetting that, but it's that's the other podcast I'm doing with my boy, Jeremiah Watkins. We're doing a lot of live Scissor Bro live events. I'll have that in the description. Go there to that channel, subscribe to it, and check out those fun episodes. YouTube, uh, StevieWeebyShow.com is a website, Stevie Weeby Bandcamp Music. Uh, I have the newest album, Kwangu, uh, I Feel So Crazy, on Spotify, Q-U-A-N-G-O-U, Patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. Um, I do have a P.O. Box, if you want to send any packages or mail, 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. Oh, that, I had it through memory. Dude, it was an honor having you. That was fun. Yeah. I'll, I'll brush my teeth more. <laughs> My buddy Skip is a trip feeling blue like a trip Frame for robbing a bank, letting loose from the hip He really couldn't predict this grip was so full of angst Him and him and were woodpeckers did a song that dance at bit Oh, rodeo man in the West, you can You're the best on the land Sailing ship.